Hello everyone. Today I wanted to continue on with my journey through the films of Masaki Kobayashi um, and discuss this 1957 film Black River. Um, and as part of the information that I'm going to provide in this uh, video, I'm consulting Stephen Prince's A Dream of Resistance, his fantastic uh, biography and discussion of uh, Kobayashi's films. And in the opening credits of um, Black River, we get, uh, right away we get a sense something different here. This is really modern, this is very up to date. This feels edgy. It has a very jazzy score, uh, kind of a Saul Bass feel to the, um, to, to the credits themselves, the kind of abstract, uh, ripped up newspapers. And we're also very, and after the credits were very efficiently uh, shown our, our milieu, our shanty town, which exists right across the street, not even on the edges. <laughs> this is right across the street from the uh, Air Force Base, United States Base. And, uh, and we see uh, right away, we see the prostitutes, the bars, all with English titles. We see the black market, the corruption that, uh, uh, that the U.S. Army Base, Air Force Base brings to the to the uh, to the local population, the local culture, and amidst all this corruption, uh, the uh, uh, there's a landlady uh, who uh, is in the process of of negotiating selling off her one of her shabby apartment buildings, and she says with quite irony in, in her voice, "Let's give democracy a chance," <laughs> and. And the, um, we also see the, uh, the, the, a very, this shabby apartment is where we're going to spend most of our time. Uh, and it's, it's the, this dwelling is inhabited by people, some are prostitutes, some have legitimate uh, jobs, but they're all dependent upon this base. And there were a lot of protests, the historical context of Black River is that there was a whole lot of protests going on in Japan against the, uh, the continuation of the American bases. Um, and there was a huge uh, uh, protest rebellion uh, against the, uh, the, an extension of another base where uh, they were going to raise uh, family farms that had gone back generations. So the, the Americans started to pull back on, on these bases. But but um, I was only temporarily because in 1960 there was a treaty signed that didn't have a lot of popular appeal uh, uh, by the ruling party, which whose premier at that time had been a class A, uh, a class A prisoner at one time after the war. Uh, class A meaning that they they oversaw atrocities. He, he by 1960 he is the premier, and they rule in favor of more bases in which Japan, uh, many, much of the population did not want to remilitarize. Uh, they wanted to be uh, and not be part of this Cold War atmosphere that was so powerful in, in, in 1960. But the story-wise, we get a kind of triangle, uh, a college student, he's uh, trying to save money, so he takes the train, lives in a, a sh very shabby little room in this apartment building. Um, and it's uh, and he he he's kind of a snob. He's an intellectual. He kind of looks down on all these people. He can't believe the sordid, tawdry lives they're living. And he becomes uh, uh, friends with a waitress who also comes from out of who comes from another location. To, and so they take the train. Uh, they meet, and, and she's she has the air of someone who has had wealth but now she has there's jobs in this shanty town so she's working as a waitress and but she's well dressed and and she attracts the attention of the local gangster and he is uh he is just uh, as corrupt and as uh, sadistic as a gangster could be and um so we get this this sense of uh, a moral swamp we get a uh, a, a, there, there's a um, uh, moral decrepitude. Everybody is sort of corrupt, and in this, in this apartment complex, there's a communist, and 
and he's trying. He's always trying to rally everybody. We gotta, we, we gotta fight against this oppressive power because their apartment building is slated to be demolished. And, but, but with the the fascination with it, this locale, even though it's shabby, there's something fascinating about it. The, it's just it has a, it has a visual visual uh, power to it in and of itself. And there's two fantastic performances in Black River. One's by Aneko Arima, and she plays the waitress, and it, it's just how she gets overwhelmed by the social forces of this town, um, and especially once the gangster uh, takes a fancy to her, she can't escape. It's uh, um, it, there were so li there were such limited opportunities for women in, in this era waitressing and they needed to work and like I say there's an intimation that at one time she was you know she didn't she was probably came from a family where she didn't even have to work so there's some sadness about her and it and, and uh, Arima just gives a fantastic performance and she was in uh, another uh, earlier Kobayashi movie where she was also terrific. But I think the one performance here that probably uh, electrifies this movie is uh, the uh, debut of Tetsuyu Nakadai. And this is his first major role. He had been in some movies, smaller parts. Uh, he would go on to make, I believe, 11 movies with Kobayashi. He was a theater actor and uh, uh, the Stanislavski school, he loved to play all kind of different parts. Um, he has, uh, he, he just electrifies, and I'll, I'll show you a picture from the book of Nakadai, and you can see the, the evil eyes, the smirk, the lithe, uh, thin body. He's, he's sort of like a panther roaming through town and, and um, and, and causing uh, just absolute despair in uh, the character that Aniko Arima plays. Um, and, but th throughout this movie, there's such a dynamic missense and the, 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 the storyline, the screenplay just moves so fast. Uh, um, and, uh, um, and, and everybody seems so vivid, all the characters, they all seem to belong in this environment for some reason. And this is not, Kobayashi is not giving us any kind of reassuring vision. This is certainly of the, of the movies I've seen thus far, this is Kobayashi's bleakest film. But it's funny because it's a bleakness that's sort of exhilarating. In other words, it's sort of like if you go to see Macbeth or a Shakespeare play where every, everybody's bad, everybody, and it's just a, a dark and bleak vision, yet when you leave the theater you feel like you've, you've had an opportunity to see something special, you've seen into some form of human behavior that even though it, 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 uh, it would turn you off, it, it, there, you, you're seeing something uh, in uh, some profound reality you, you sense it beyond, beyond the storyline itself. And of course, Kobayashi is always, always um, uh, pleading for the sacredness of the individual and in, his, uh, in, in the individual's uh, struggle against the oppressive forces, that, that uh, historical forces, cultural forces, uh, it, it's, you, you feel it, you feel it in the depths of, especially in the character of Reneko Arima in this film. It's, it's just a, it's a, a, it's a bleak vision, but like I say, it's also kind of exhilarating. And this is, I think, is, is my own personal opinion, this is Kobayashi's best film thus far up until uh, The Human Condition, which I've never seen before. And I was going to go through all these movies chronologically by, by release date. But I <clears throat> have decided to skip over the human condition, and I'm going to go to the inheritance next, which is the film that is the follow-up to the human condition. I think it's 1962. That is the fourth film on that uh, Criterion Eclipse set, and it is like all these other uh, Kobayashi movies I'm talking about available on the Criterion Channel. And and I'll I'll come back uh, to I, what I wanted, and I'll continue on through uh, Samurai Rebellion, which is the last Kobayashi 
film that is available. That he actually made seven more movies, but I haven't been able to locate any of those. And then I'll end up this journey with uh, Kobe, through Kobayashi's movies with what is largely considered to be his artistic masterpiece. And if, if not quite that, certainly his, um, his most um, autobiographical testament. Okay, so that'll about wrap this uh, video up. Uh, I, as always, thanks a lot for everybody who listened to me. Any comments would be welcome. Uh, you guys take care, and I will catch you next time.